Okay, today in the garage, we're gonna build a patch panel to fill this uh, rusty area here. So a couple weeks ago, uh, some of you may have seen the video, I'll put a link, uh, a link in the description here if you haven't, uh, but I fixed this window channel here. I, I uh, fabricated a piece that'll uh, hold the rubber glass, or the, the rubber that holds the glass in. I still need to trim that down, but I'm pretty happy with the shape. It's, it's not perfect, uh, but that should be pretty well hidden with the weather stripping that goes in there. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Uh, so the next piece is we've got this large rusty area here. So let me give you a better view of that. So here you can see the rusted out area. We've got our new metal here that I fixed up a while back. It's a little wavy, but uh, what's going to happen is there'll be weather stripping that comes up over this. And I need to trim this down a little bit still, but I can do that once I make this panel. So, if we look over here, you can see this side, it's not great, but the whole, uh, the, the shape is still is there. Um, we've got a lot of flaking paint here that might make it a little uneven for making a template. But, if I measure out the halfway point, what I can do is I can make a template on this side where I can see uh, the full shape, because it's not completely rusted away. And then the other side will simply be the mirror image of that. So I'm going to get some paper. We're going to lay out a template to get a uh, rough idea of what size uh, sheet of steel we're going to need. Okay, so thinking through uh, what I want to do for the, the patch panel, you know, the, the key thing is to make sure you go all the way to good metal so you don't leave any of the rusty stuff there. And you can see it's fairly rusty along this lip, but down here uh, under where it's, uh, the trunk lid is, that's pretty solid. So I think if I keep that, I can also hide my weld seam down in here so it won't be, uh, it won't be very obvious. Um, so if I go there, and obviously I have to go clear up to where the window channel piece meets, and we'll just butt that up, which should line up to, or should be the mirror image of this. So if we take our paper, make a little bit of a template. Uh, okay, my center point's right here. We want to line up with the center point. And I'm going to put the bottom of the paper right into that ridge. Now, that conveniently, that's pretty much a simple curve. It's not a compound curve. So that should work out pretty well if we lay it there. Um, take a couple magnets to hold it in place. Uh, let's see, make sure we haven't moved right there. Okay, it's a, got a little bit of a compound curve to it, but not too bad. Okay, so the template's there. You can see it doesn't sit quite flat, so obviously there's some shrinking and stretching we're going to have to do to the metal. But for now, we just want to get an idea of how big a sheet of steel... Or okay, here we can see it's bunched up quite a bit. So yeah, we've got a lot of bit of forming to do here. In fact, what I probably should do, yeah, let's do this. Right here in the middle of the pattern, we can get it to lay fairly flat. And what we'll have to do is cut a little bit of metal down here. Okay, so we've got laying fairly flat here. And for now, I just want to cut off some excess paper. So I'm just going to go right along here. And we're going to cut that so we don't have too much paper to deal with. And then we can massage it a little bit more until we get it just to the right place. Now, the paper's not quite long enough. I want to come all the way out to this seam here. Uh, but we can uh, add, tape a little bit extra paper to the template later on for that. Well, I've spent a few minutes getting the uh, paper template cut the way I want, and I am uh, think I've got a pretty good fit here. Uh, so the red line along here is uh, where the bend is, 
and I, I used black for my cut lines, red for my bend line, just so I didn't get uh, confused and cut the wrong thing. Um, also, I added a couple of registration lines here. So you can see that uh, I used silver because it shows up on the rusty metal. Uh, multiple colors of Sharpies is very useful. Um, and I did have to extend it a little bit because the paper wasn't quite large enough, so I need to add another registration line here so I know the template lines up. Uh, but actually, at this point, I think I'm happy with uh, how the template fits. And we can uh, go ahead and, well, actually, what I should do now is I should take this off here. And in theory, this is an exact mirror image. So uh, if I did my template right, we should be able to just take it off here. Line it up on my center line, butt it up to my window channel. However, the window channel is not quite as good as. Okay, I did something wrong because I'm several inches short. I'm not very good at this. As I said before, I am uh, an amateur at this. Um, I must have measured my center line incorrectly because. If we line this up with the same body seam, we're several inches short. Now, that... Okay, I clearly just did not measure my center correctly. Okay, you know the old adage, measure twice, cut once. Uh, at least it was just paper, so I'm not cutting too much. I think it's... Uh, for those of you in other parts of the world, I'm sure you'll uh, just laugh at uh, a silly Americans not using uh, the metric system, which I, I happen to agree is kind of silly. Um, so I was doing half of 50, and evidently somewhere in my mind I got confused and you know was thinking half of you know four feet, because that would be a, a common measurement here in the U.S. So I did tw what should have been 25 and an eighth inches. I did 24 and an eighth inches which means my center line's an inch over, which means the template is significantly too short. But I can add a little bit of paper to the template so it's not all lost. Well, that was easy enough to fix, just a little extra paper, some tape um, overlapped it a little bit, but it is one inch longer now. And so now, let's see if the mirror image will work here. So, if we line that up on our center line again, hey, that looks pretty good. Uh, doesn't fit real smoothly up here, but I do need to do some adjusting on this piece, but uh, I can trim the metal back there and make that fit. So what I should be able to do is, I'm not gonna touch that side to start with. What I'm gonna do is, I think I uh, can go ahead and start cutting out the metal on this side. Uh, like I said, I want to get rid of everything that's rusty. Uh, for, for now, at least, I'm going to, well, no, I think I'm going to go clear up to my center line. And I'm, but I'm going to leave most of this lip. Uh, where, where it's solid, I'm going to leave all of it, and I can just trim my patch panel back. Because uh, that angle in there gives it, uh, is what gives this some rigidity, and I don't want that to lose all of its shape as I cut it. Um, however, I do think the lip that the weather strip goes into is gonna keep it pretty rigid. Uh, also, there is a brace under here that, uh, that holds this in place, so I need to be careful not to cut that, but uh, I think it'll hold together pretty well. So I'm gonna take a cutoff wheel, and to start off, I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this out, and then I can come back in, we'll figure out how far the rust goes and cut all the way into the good metal.
Well, that gets rid of a good chunk of rust. Uh, now it's just a matter of getting a little fresh metal put in here. Um, I did get a little bit crazy with uh, cutting. I kind of went downhill towards the end. And the annoying thing is this was all better metal, so I'd planned on leaving a little bit of that. But there's still uh, plenty that my patch panel should cover that. Uh, metal was pretty solid here. I was a little concerned about this brace in here, uh, but it actually ties up farther underneath it, so I wasn't anywhere near cutting through that. So uh, I do still need to trim this piece back, uh, but I think I'm going to wait on that. Uh, for now, I think the next step is to take my template laid out on a fresh piece of steel, and we'll uh, see about starting to get this into shape. I'm going to hold it down with some magnets so it doesn't shift on me and simply trace it out. Now on this bottom edge, I'm probably going to end up trimming it back a little bit more anyway. So the fact that it's kind of a wavy line is not too critical. However, I'm going to leave a little extra down on this end because that's where I accidentally cut a little too much. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, so next, I'm just going to use my electric shears to get the rough shape cut out of it. Well, now it's just a simple matter of cutting it out. Now. Uh, the upper part, the, the ends in the upper part, that's a fairly uh, uh, specific cut that should butt up against uh, the metal that's already there. The lower cut, I'm going to leave a little bit long until I've got it all, all formed and then I'll trace where it is on the car. Uh, so now is the part that I don't really enjoy because my hands are not strong enough to do this. Uh, and the annoying thing is I actually just ordered a Beverly Shirt. Not, not a Beverly branded shear, but the same sort of thing, which is a bench top shear, which would be the perfect tool for this, but it won't be here till next week. So until then I get to enjoy getting some hand exercise again. Well, my hands are a little tired from uh, all the clipping or all the uh, work with the tin snips, but I've got my piece cut out to the right shape. Now, if I put my template on here, you can see I turn it up here where you can see I've left a little extra metal on this side, but that's where I'm going to have to trim it to, to meet the cart. So I can trim that later. A little extra uh, metal to help me work with it will probably be helpful. So now, uh, so the template's face down since I'm now doing the mirror side of where I did the template, but it's thin enough paper that you can see my red line. So if I line this up, I can mark all the way through there. A couple magnets to hold it in place. Um, now you can see that this is, of course, not a straight, uh, a straight line. If it was, I could simply put it in my sheet metal brake and bend it over. Uh, it's a little trickier with the, uh, the bend in it. Uh, but I've got an idea for how I want to try doing this. This is an experiment, but I've got a just a random uh, scrap piece of uh, steel that's uh, about 3 16th inch, I think. Uh, I think I should be able to stick this in the vise and bend it to this uh, contour. Then I can use this as a form and tap it down with a hammer to hopefully get that, uh, that bend where I want it. So that's the theory at least. We'll see how it works. Uh, first, I need to get this marked, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a center punch to mark through my line in a few places. And then I can connect the line and draw, draw the curve directly on the steel. I think this is too thick. I don't think this is going to work. I have another plan. Well, I'm not sure why I didn't think of this to start with. This is actually a much better way to do it. Uh, this steel, 
maybe if I was stronger and wanted to hit it a lot harder with the hammer, I could, could uh, bend it in the, uh, in the vise. But I think this will work much better. What I have here, it's a uh, simple hydraulic press with a press brake kit it, in it. Um, and um, it's designed to do full 90 degree bends. But if I just uh, do a little bit of a uh, bend in multiple places as I move it along, I should be able to get just the curve I want. So if I've got my template handy, I should be able to do a little by little, match it up with the template to see how it is. So I'm going to put this on my workbench over here. Line it up with where I think I want it bent. Put it in. Just a little at a time. Should get just what we want. All right, that's not too bad. Um, may have to bring the camera over to the workbench to show you, but actually you can see. I've got it following the line fairly well. So now I should be able to set this up into the vise, or maybe I'll see if I can clamp it to my workbench somehow. I can set the sheet metal on top of it and I should be able to Hopefully, this, this is an experiment. We'll see how this works, but I should be able to form the uh, patch panel around this to get the, uh, the sharp bend that I need. All right, well, we'll see how this is going to work. I've got my dimples in here. I put in with my center punch, which uh, shows me where I want the bend to be. Um, now, this end, I can see the end. Now, this piece of steel isn't quite long enough for what I need. Uh, but the last bit of this is fairly straight so that once i get uh, most of it bent i don't think that part will be uh, too difficult since i don't have a curve so what i need to do is i can kind of see where the dimples come through on the other side so i need to line those up here this side it's a little easier to see now uh, as i said this is an experiment not sure how this is going to work and I've already moved it. See how this goes. Little by little, hopefully we can get this to bend the way we want. I may need to clamp this down somehow. I'm not sure how I would do that. Now the ideal way to do this actually would be if I had the right kind of dies for my bead roller, uh, what's called a tipping die, you can actually bend this with the bead roller, but I do not have the right kind of dies. I think I'll have to add that to my list of tools that I would like to have that I'll see about getting at some point. But we can make do. Well, I'm finding that for getting the curve started at least, uh, using the corner of my welding bench uh, seems to be working much better. Um, just doing it little by little and establishing that curve. I think once I get it partly established, I think uh, the uh, forming piece I just created, I think may uh, be a better way to finish it off. So it looks like a mangled mess now, but uh, hopefully we can end up with something that looks decent. Okay, well, it's starting to come along. You can see the curve. It's a little wavy right now. Of course, uh, as, since this is an outside curve, as I bring it in, there's actually too much metal, so it's going to fold a little bit or wrinkle a little bit as it tries to uh, come around. But uh, if you saw my video from I did the window channel, I have my shrinker stretcher tool. What I can do is I can come in and shrink that in some places to uh, get the... Uh, get that waviness out of there. Uh, also, I can use that to affect the, uh, the curve in this direction if I need to. So I'm just gonna get it fairly close now, and then I'll probably be doing some of that for the final, the final fitting. Okay, now you can see, actually what I was saying about uh, needing to stretch that is since I'm bending this over, 
that's actually causing the whole piece to flare out this way. And you can see that I can rock this side to side. Uh, so I may need, however, I'm going to need a little bit of curve in that direction anyway. But I may need to go ahead and get the, uh, the shrinker out and take care of some of that. Let's get it formed a little bit more first. So I just did a quick uh, test fit on the car and I could definitely tell we're, if we want to be anywhere even close, I got to do a little bit of shrinking here. So just a little bit and already I can see that this is curved quite a bit, almost in the wrong direction. We'll see. Let's see how this looks. Ooh, ooh, that was, every once in a while that shrinker really grabs and does a little too much. Other times it doesn't do anything. Some might say that's a problem with the operator, not the tool. Those people would be wrong. <laughs> so test fitting this onto the car a little bit. It's, it's wavy and needs a lot of work, but um, I can definitely tell I'm getting close. It's... Uh, now I still need to, uh, if you look at the original part, it's actually curved this way. So I need to form that curve still. But the uh, lip for the trunk, it's, it still needs to bend a little bit more, but it's getting close. And I'm gonna have to fine tune the edge here. I think what'll make this a little bit easier is if I go ahead and trim off this lip. I had left that long after I made it. Um, but now since both pieces are a little bit long, they just get in the way of each other. If I can trim this off to where I want it, then I can overlay the other piece, mark it, and then trim it to fit, and then just weld it in. So uh, time to do a little bit of measuring to measure exactly where I want to cut this and then get my angle grinder with the uh, cutoff wheel. Well, I've got things trimmed uh, fairly well. I think I'm going to still need to trim a little bit more. And of course, I'm going to have gaps to fill because I'm not that accurate when I trim. Um, so now I'm, uh, I've got this curve pretty close to where I want it. Uh, what I found worked best actually was the, uh, I've got a dolly in the vise and I could just run along the edge of it and, and bend it over slowly with that. So that's pretty close now. Uh, but now what I need to do is this piece should have a curve in this direction. So I started forming that um, and I'm using the same dolly and uh, trying to do more of a hammer on dolly uh, technique, which uh, if you're not familiar with that, there's hammer on dolly means you've got good solid, you're, you're basically squishing the metal between the hammer and the dolly. So you've got the metal straight, uh, you know, flat against the dolly and the crown flat against that. And what that'll actually do is it'll, it squeezes the metal and stretches it out, which should give me a little bit of the curve. Uh, plus the shape of the dolly is curved in the direction I want. So there'll be some bending. So uh, I'm gonna keep, uh, keep pounding that out and get it close. Um, and I'm gonna have a fairly rough finish. So, some guys can do this and have it look absolutely perfect. Of course, usually they uh, use an English wheel or something to smooth it out after the fact, uh, which I don't have. Um, but as long as I can get it pretty close, I'm, you know, I'm not against using a little bit of body filler to, to make it look decent as long as I can keep that to a minimum. Uh, well, I've been beating on this panel for I don't know how long and uh, to be honest, I'm getting a little bit frustrated. I think I uh, may have uh, kind of overextended myself. As I you know, always say in these videos, I'm an amateur learning how to do things, uh, so sharing my mistakes with you is as important as any successes. Um, I've been banging on this. I'm getting it closer, but uh, it's still kind of a mess. Um, also, I didn't do a very good job of trimming, um, but I think I I've been using the hammer and dolly and trying to shape it and you know get the curve into it. Uh, I think what I really need to do at this point is go ahead and get it in place and start welding it and forming it on the car with a hammer. 
Uh, it's not going to be pretty. It's it's going to need a little bit of bondo. But like I said, as long as I can keep that to a somewhat to a minimum, I think I'll be happy. Um, I'm probably going to have some gaps I'll need to come in with other little bits of metal to fill in. But I don't. I think maybe once I get things uh, tacked in place and start hammering them, they're going to be okay. Uh, this corner is not going to line up down here in the corner very well. But I still need to come back in and uh, rework some of this uh, window channel because it's not rusted through like some of this that I replaced was, uh, but it's it's getting there. So I think replacing that with fresh metal will be good. Uh, so I think I'm going to get the welder out, get this at least tacked in place, and uh, you know, hammer it around, see if I can get the line up. Uh, but it's getting late, so I think it's getting close to beer time for today. So a lot of that may be tomorrow. Well, I've got my cold beer, so you can tell that uh, I'm done for today. The project's not necessarily done, but this is all I'm accomplishing today. Uh, turned out to be a little uglier than I thought. Uh, you know, I, I thought I could do better than this, but in the end, I think it's going to be serviceable. Um, I do have some gaps underneath that I'm going to have to fill in. Uh, some of it I can weld, some of it uh, I'm going to have to put uh, little patch panels in, and that doesn't quite line up, but I think that's going to work. So uh, what I didn't film that I've been working on is I've been, I started out tacking it in a few spots where it fit well, and then tapping it around with the hammer, tacking it some more, and getting it fit. Um, you can see it's, it's pretty much dented and uh, mangled. I mean, not too dented and mangled, but it's, it's not smooth like you would expect a, a car finish. But that's because I, I used the hammer to get that curve in there. Um, once I do a little bit of Bondo on that, it's going to be pretty thin. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. So I, I think this, this actually worked out all right. Um, things I learned while doing this, uh, I think I should have done it in, in two separate pieces. Rather than having... Uh, you know, this piece that, that actually shows um, and the lip all is one part that was bent because that, uh, you know, doing that bend along a curved line, while yeah, I'm, yeah, I got it working, it didn't turn out great. I think I would have been better off just doing the face piece and then I could have done essentially a flat piece of metal in there and just welded along the seam, uh, pretty much like I'm doing here on the window channel. But all in all, you know, uh, for uh, for an amateur, I figure it's not too bad, and uh, this is the this is the more difficult side. On the uh, the other side, I have spots I need to patch, but it's not going to be one huge piece. It'll be just a few uh, few little spots for the rustier bits. Um, so this weekend, I'll probably uh, do a little more work on this. I've got a little more welding, a little more finessing of that, but I think I can make it work. And uh, then I can move on to, to the next thing. In the meantime, uh, if you like what you see, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel so that you're uh, notified when the next video comes up. Um, I'm not real regular about posting videos, but I'm trying to do them. Uh, I was going to do them every week. That's, uh, that's not happening. It's about every two weeks or so, uh, depending on how busy I am with other projects. But um, the, there will definitely be more, so subscribe and see more. And... Uh, till then, I'm going to enjoy my cold beer.